Hey y'all, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this delicious ribeye steak, baked potato, and steamed broccoli. So make sure you stick around. So first, let's start with our potatoes, giving them a good rinse. Pat dry with some paper towels. Take a fork and pierce it on every side. This is gonna allow the steam to seep out of the potatoes as they bake. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Make sure your oven is at that temperature before you place your potatoes inside. We're gonna bake these for one hour or until they are fork tender. So now let's work on the broccoli. So when you clean your broccoli, just make sure you spray it down really good. Make sure you clean it under running water. So now I'm gonna add some water to a large pot and I'm gonna use this to steam the broccoli. So just make sure that when you make yours, you don't add too much water to your pot because you don't want the broccoli to touch the water. I like to bring my water to a boiling temperature before adding the broccoli, which I'm only gonna steam for about five to seven minutes. So for the steak, I'm gonna use rosemary, thyme, fresh garlic, unsalted butter. Then I'm gonna season it with kosher salt and peppercorn medley. So now I'm gonna peel all three garlic cloves. I like to smash it first, that helps it to peel easily. And then I'm gonna smash the garlic cloves again. This is going to help it release more flavor. So now let's go back to the sink again. I have here my one and a half pound ribeye steak. So we're gonna sear our steak. Make sure that you pat it dry on both sides with a paper towel to remove all of the moisture. We don't want anything to affect the searing process. And the meat should be at room temperature so that it will cook evenly once you sear it. I took my steak out of the fridge one hour before cooking. You can season your steak with just a little bit more salt and peppercorn than what you see here in this demonstration. I used a tad bit less because we're trying to cut back on salt. The amount that I used was perfect for us. So let's take a quick look at the seasoning that I'm using, which is uh, the peppercorn. This has black peppercorns, coriander, pink peppercorns, white peppercorns, allspice, and green peppercorns. This was a very tasty and flavorful blend. It was perfect on the steak. Before you begin to season your steak, make sure that you preheat your skillet. You wanna add enough oil to coat the bottom of the skillet so that you'll get a good sear on the bottom of your steak. Once you begin to see smoke, that's a good indicator that your skillet is very, very hot. You want it to be very, very hot once you put your steak inside of it. So once you drop in your steak, don't touch it. Like drop it in, leave it alone. Don't move it, don't lift it, leave it alone. So after about five minutes, now I'm gonna flip this over Manage your heat, don't let your heat drop too low and don't let it rise up too, too high because you don't want to burn your steak. So after I gave it the first flip, now I'm gonna add in the butter and to this I'm gonna add the garlic, thyme and rosemary. So after you drop in those aromatics, just expect all of that flavor to come out and get all up in that butter, which is why you wanna continuously spoon some of the butter on top of the steak, just like this. Once my steak is done, I'm gonna let this rest on my countertop for up to seven minutes. And this is just gonna allow those juices to lock in. And the steak also continues to cook on the inside immediately after it comes out of the skillet. So don't cut into it, leave it alone. 
So now let's check on our potatoes. These have been baking for 50 minutes so far. I'm now gonna add some melted butter and salt on both sides of the potatoes. Then I'm gonna place them back inside of the oven for about 10 minutes. So now let's plate up the food. So I'm gonna cut the potato open just to release all of that steam and also so that I can get my butter and my sour cream inside. I like to use foil to protect my fingers from getting burnt because this potato was piping hot. So I'm using some Shed Spread Country Crock instead of butter and some sour cream and green onions. So thank y'all for watching. I'm gonna cut the steak open for you so you can get a look at the inside. So let's take a look at it. So how do you like your steak? Do you like your steak well done, medium rare, rare, or medium well? How do you like your steak? This was so, so good. Buttery garlic flavor, the rosemary thyme, that uh, peppercorn medley, the kosher salt, perfect flavor combination for this steak. I hope that you guys will try this recipe and I hope to catch you in my next video. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's juicy, it's, it's rare, medium, it's not rare, it's medium. It's a perfect medium too, it's tender. Oh, buttery, perfect. You want some A1 steak sauce? Nah, the juice is coming out. It's good. You wanna get that, you see that line around it? That where it's darker versus lighter pink in the middle? That's showing the layers, it's almost like layers of flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna work on the garlic, okay? So I'm just gonna start by crushing it a little bit to help it to peel easier. See, if you crush it, it's going to peel. Just like that fingernail polish after a few days. That's if you don't get the gel colors. I'm just going to crush my garlic. So you want to go in with your hand like this and lean on it. Ah, lean on it. Lean on it. Ah, lean on it. You want to put your, put your weight on it, baby. Put your weight on it, baby. Just put all of your weight on it. Same for this. Yep. Get your butt over here. So normally, I'll rinse my broccoli, but this time, I just decided to cut it first. So, make sure you rinse your broccoli first so that you don't see the little buggy wuggies. Look, see the little buggy wuggies, see? Oh. This one, he a, he a fast little devil. Look at that. Rinse before cutting. This is why you rinse before cutting. And with broccoli, rinse it real good. Real good, because the bugs, they can hide in the, the little bushy parts. They'll hide in there. Yep.